Hello, welcome to our latest video on how to play Sudoku. This is a series of instructional videos where we talk about different techniques for solving Sudoku puzzles. And today uh, we're going to talk a bit about a slightly more advanced Sudoku technique uh, that uh, I like to refer to as solving from multiple directions. Basically, uh, the idea is as you get better at playing Sudoku, you should hopefully start to develop a little bit of a more sophisticated vision of the grid and you can start uh, seeing opportunities, seeing possibilities, seeing patterns uh, from multiple directions, from multiple places at once on the grid instead of just focusing in on a single row or a single column and counting through the numbers one through nine and figuring out you know which number is missing and, and doing kind of simple process of elimination like that um, ideally you'll get to the point where you can eliminate multiple spaces at once uh, or rather, multi, you know, or eliminate multiple numbers at once from one single space by looking to, you know, a row and a column and a square, for example, you know, and see how the different elements of the Sudoku grid interact uh, in a slightly more complex way. So I'm going to kind of solve the Sudoku puzzle and we can talk through it as we go. And hopefully um, the opportunity will arise where I can kind of point out some some multiple direction problem solving, so you can see see what I'm talking about uh, in action. Um, it's hard to know where to start. The, these types of solutions tend to arise when you least suspect it. You can't always, you know, just go and pluck them out of the grid right off the bat. But uh, let's kind of look through and just see what jumps out at me. Um, I'm going to kind of look at this top set of three squares. I see a one, two, three, five, seven, eight, nine. I know that there's a four and a six missing from these two spots. Um, and there's a six in this bottom row, so that means the four has to be there and the six has to be there. And let's see, what does that leave me with? Um, I'm gonna look at this center row. We know that we're missing a two and a five, two, five, eight, nine. Two, five, eight, nine. Um, Two, five, eight, and nine are the f are the four numbers that are missing from these four spaces. And this here's a good okay. This is perfect. We know we're missing two, five, eight, and nine from these four spaces right here. Okay, so any one of these four spaces in this center row that I'm clicking and highlighting could contain two, five, eight, or nine. Okay. If I look at this space right here, this is in a square that contains five and nine. So five and nine cannot be here. So this could contain two or eight. This little orange, yellow, yellowish, pale, <laughs> off orange, whatever, color, square, space, space, not square, within this square could contain number two or number eight. However, there's an eight in this column, so that means that the eight cannot be here, so that means it has to be two. See what we just did? We looked for uh, multiple directions at once. We looked within the square that the space is in, and we also looked within the column that contributes into that uh, space. And we know that there are four different numbers that we are looking for. There are four different numbers we are looking for that potentially could be in the space, and we've eliminated three of the numbers. See? Five, nine, and eight. Eight, nine, and five have all been eliminated from the space. So that means the only number left to place in that space is number two. You see what we just did? Isn't that incredible? As you start to develop a little more of a vision for the grid, you can start to see opportunities where you can eliminate multiple numbers at once from multiple directions. Um, and it's it's kind of a powerful feeling. It's a fun feeling because you can you start to feel like you have a little more vision, a little more momentum, and you can uh, you can build on that momentum moving forward. Uh, and it's a very satisfying like feeling of like a puzzle piece falling into place. It's like, ah, I just figured that one out. And so hopefully you can start to get that feeling too. So we just eliminated two from that space. We're still, we're still wanting to eliminate, we still have three spaces in this middle row. We have one, two, three, four, six, seven. So five, eight, and nine are the remaining numbers. And if we look at this space right here, we know that five and nine cannot be here, so that means eight has to be there. And so that means five and nine have to be in these two spaces, but there's a five right there, so that means the nine has to be there, and the five has to be there. 
So very quickly we can build on that momentum and keep eliminating uh, eliminating other possibilities. Let's go back and finish our work right here. We've got one empty space in this top center square. It must contain the number one. And that is that. Let's see. Sometimes, sometimes some good possibilities for this technique are if there are like three or four empty spaces in a row or column or square. So let's see what we can do with that. Um, here's a vertical column that has three empty spaces. This vertical column starting with 185. So we know we're missing two, three, and four. Um, Oh, and I just found I just found a solution. Okay, this space right here, this orange, yellowish orange space. We know we're missing two, three, and four from these three spaces. So this space could contain two or three or four. But we know from looking to the left and the right that it cannot contain two or four, so this space must contain three, because we already eliminated two and four. That means these two spaces must contain two and four, but this space cannot contain two because there's already two in that row, so the four must be there and the two must go there. So very quickly, we've eliminated some more spaces. Um, let's see if we can finish our work in this bottom center square. We still need a 1 and an 8. There's a 1 in that center column, so the 1 cannot be there. So the 8 must be there, and the 1 must be there. And you see how quickly this can go once you start to develop a little bit of momentum and a little bit of vision for the, for the grid, like I was saying. Let's see if we can finish our work in the center square. We have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. We're missing a 5 and a 9. No, we're not, because there's a 5 in the top row, so that must contain 9, and that must contain 5. You can check your work at any time by clicking Solve, which I will do now, and we're all good, because all of the spaces are showing up as green, so we're in good shape. Uh, let's keep looking around and see what else we can find. I'm trying to illustrate the technique of looking from multiple directions at the same time and eliminating multiple numbers at once. Let's look for another column that has like four empty spaces, like this one. It has uh, a 1, a 4, 5, 7, 9. So we're missing a 2, a 3, a 6, and an 8. 2, 3, 6, and 8. 2, 3, 6, and 8. Any one of these spaces could contain 2, 3, 6, or 8 until we can eliminate any numbers to prove otherwise. I see an opportunity. This space right here, this off yellow one, could contain 2, 3, 6, or 8. However, in this square, there's already a 2 and a 6, and there's a 3 in this center row, so that means 2, 3, 6 are eliminated, 8 is the only possibility. So we very quickly, from looking in two different direct directions, we looked to this square that the space was in, and we also looked to a row off to the right, um, and we were able to eliminate three numbers at once. So let's look at the rest of this row. We still are trying to eliminate, still, or sorry, rather trying to find 2, 3, and 6. Uh, we know the two can't be there because there's a two right there. And oh, I just saw another opportunity. Okay, we were trying to, we're looking for two, three, and six in this vertical column right here. Two, three, and six. If you look to the right, there's a two and a three. So that means this space has to contain six. And we know that there's a 2 in this square, so that cannot be a 2, so that must be a 3. And that means that this one remaining space is 2. So very quickly, again, you can see how quickly things can fall into place if you're able to eliminate multiple numbers at the same time by looking at multiple directions at the same time. Let's see what else we can figure out. Let's look at this lower left square. There's one, two, three, four empty spaces, and we know we need, we're missing, let's see, we, we already have the numbers one, two, three, four, and eight, so we're missing five, six, seven, nine. Five, six, seven, and nine. Uh, I see another opportunity here. Um, any one of these spaces could contain five, six, seven, or nine. This space, let's focus on this yellow space. There's a five here, so it cannot contain five. There's a seven and a nine, and also another five, but just for the sake of you know, humor, humoring me, <laughs> we can look at five from this direction and seven and nine from this direction. So we've eliminated three numbers for this space. There's only one number left that could possibly be there, and that is number six. So now we still need to eliminate five, seven, and nine, figure out where five, seven, and nine go within this lower left square. And at the moment, we're kind of stuck because there's a 5 here, so the 5 can't be there. 
there's a nine here, so the nine can't be there. But at the moment, we're kind of stuck. Uh, let's see if we can finish our work with this center row. We know we're missing number one in this space. Let's fill it in. Let's check our work, and we're good. We're golden, or rather, we're green. All of the spaces that we filled in are correct for now. Let's see what else we can figure out. Let's look at this far right column just for the heck of it. Uh, we currently have one, two, three, four, six, and nine. So that means in this column, we still need to solve five, seven, and eight. Uh, oh, this is so perfect. This is a perfect example of this technique. I'm so glad we're doing this. This is the perfect example. Okay, these three spaces here. These three spaces. Uh, should contain in some order the numbers 5, 7, and 8. We can see right now that there's an 8 in this lower right square. So these two spaces cannot contain 8. So that means uh, this space right here has to contain 8. And then these bottom two spaces must contain 5 and 7. Um, so that's a good example of how you might have a blank space in a different square. But if you can eliminate multiple squares, or sorry, multiple spaces within one square, that will give you enough information to be able to fill in a space in a totally different square without having to scan all the side rows and columns. Um, so just by looking at which spaces are empty and how they align within the squares that you're looking at, you can often uh, you know, find some solutions that way. Let's see what else we can find here. I'm just looking at this square right now. We're, we know we're missing a 1. Uh, I just very quickly can see we can solve this because there's a 1 in this left column, so the 1 can't be in any of these spaces, so the 1 can be here. We still need a 5, 6, and 7. Um, this space right here cannot contain 5 or 7 because they're in the same row, so that means that this must be 6. And then that cannot be 5 because there's a 5 there, so that must be a 7. And then the 5 goes here just by simple process of elimination. So finishing our work, this top row must contain a 1 in that space. And again, we're missing a 9 right there. And then this square, the only number missing is 3. Let's check our work. And we're Good to go. Everything's green. So hopefully this technique has been helpful for you. I found some what are hopefully some good, vivid, you know, memorable examples of how to solve spaces from multiple directions at once, eliminating multiple numbers at once, and hopefully developing a slightly bigger vision, broader vision of what the Sudoku grid is all about, so that you can build momentum faster and solve Sudoku puzzles faster. Thank you for listening. As always, enjoy playing Sudoku.